This next one is the third episode off our new season. Hello, everybody. It's Schmitty with another episode of Talking Schmidt. Today on the program, we got a fucking another banger for you. It's Brian Brannon coming back from episode 83 to the present with the guitarist of the band JFA, Don Pendleton, after these messages. Blood wizard. Blood wizard. Blood wizard. Blood wizard. Blood wizard. Shop at bloodwizard.com. Hey, it's Corey at Blue Plate, 3218 Mission Street. Come see us. Meatloaf, fried chicken, deviled eggs, Dollar Olympia beers. We're here every day of the week. We got a garden and we got smiles on our faces. Come let us make you happy. Okay, so this is Don Redondo from JFA and you're listening to uh, Talking Schmidt. Hey, hey, hey. Talking Schmidt. I'm already not watching. It's cool, like tonight is the night. Damn, this is like the coolest thing I'm ever gonna do. I wouldn't say it was fun. What do you mean, bro? Christian Fletcher's younger brother. Fuck the Dodgers. Oh, big dog's in. What do you think, Dolan? John? Schmitty. Talking Schmidt. Alpha Macaroni. Most of these guys, their opinion don't matter. Talking Schmidt, right? And skateboarding. I remember that. Talking Schmidt. What are you doing? Holy shit. Skateboarding homies. No, Schmidt, you can't jump in. What is happening? I'm here for Greg Smith. Yay! Gregory. <laughs> yes, we are. <laughs> <laughs> wi Fi check one, Wi Fi check two. Look at this. We got two thirds of JFA in this fucker. We got Brian Brandon coming back and Don Redondo. What's up, guys? Stoked. What's Stoked. up, man? How are you? I'm good, man. I just uh, was uh, listening to some of your guys' music today um, to get me fired up. I went to Oakland and I just put on the Spotify and hit random. And, uh, you know, I still think that that song Count has to be the fastest song in the history of music, right? <laughs> So Chicken Butt, our original bass player, wrote one called Do the Hannigan, and I was pissed it was shorter than anything I wrote, so I wrote Count, so it would be shorter than his song. <laughs> that rips. I was like, what's uh, the process for writing that song? <laughs> <laughs> True or false, JFA is 43 years old this year. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, as four, as 40, March. 42. So it was 81 and this is 23. So that'd be 42. 40, okay. 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 Well, I thought we were going to give Bryce a shout out, but I uh, will still give him yeah, a you'll shout have out. To, you'll have to hang out. We do have a short song on the new album too. It's called Kaiser Sose. Oh, so, yeah. It, it, the except usual for suspects. The, yeah. Except for the uh, drawn out ending at the end. It's, it's yeah, pretty it's short. It's pretty short. Yeah. Okay. Well, I looked at the, uh, like I said, I was listening to Spotify and I rewound it and watched it and it said four seconds was the total elapsed time. Per count? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty sick. Uh, hey, Don, can you tell us what you remember as the earliest memory of uh, meeting Brian? And now a first impression from Don Redondo. I... Went and found the drummer. I already knew the bass player, and I went with my bass player to this ramp called the Pima Ramp, and that's where Brian and all of his friends were hanging out. And I just remember seeing him doing, you know, fakey ollies and frontside grinds and frontside airs and stuff. And I'm like, cool, he's in. He's a good skater. And this is in Arizona? Yeah, in Arizona. I think at the end of Brian's neighborhood, there was a vacant lot, and they got a bunch of wood together and built this huge half pipe. So that's where I met him for the first time. I was with my bass player and he took me to meet Brian. Okay. So you were like, we're starting a band. We need a singer. Absolutely. And and Mike said, I've got a guy. Let's go. Let's go see him. How quickly after that are you guys like jamming and putting together songs? Um, Within a month. Um, That was I mean, the shooting thing happened in March. We probably put the band together in April. And in early May, we already played our first show. But we only played like six or seven songs. Was the first show, did you guys open for Black Flag or something? What was the first no, show? No, that's on uh, Wikipedia. It's actually wrong. The uh, The first show I weaseled, I knew the guys from the crowd, the Huntington Beach band that's on Beach Boulevard. 
Uh-huh. And so I got them an Arizona show and I told the guy who was putting the show on, it's like, hey, if I get you a headliner, get my band on the bill. So that's how we got on the show. And like I said, we only knew about seven songs, um, but that was our first show. What was it? Do you remember what the first song was? Oh, yeah. Pipe Truck. Uh, we mashed uh, the Dead Kennedys police truck with Pipeline by the Chantays. We used to have those big trucks that moved the Amaron pipes around. So it was kind of an ode to those big trucks, pipe trucks. Right. right. It was part Pipeline and then part police truck from the Dead Kennedy. So if you listen to that. And okay. our new, uh, we got a new song off the new album uh, called Desert Pipes. And we got our buddy Ping, who skated the original Desert Pipes out by Lake Pleasant, just the big ones in the middle of nowhere, you know, uh, on friggin' like, uh, you know, two inch wide trucks and stuff. And uh, he's got all kinds of film of it. So we got a song, we got, we're going to do a video with that. Right. Uh, and that actually shows the 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 pipe trucks themselves. Whether well, they actually carried the pipes, they drove the truck through the pipe, and then like the middle part opened up and picked up the pipe and lifted it a little bit so they could carry it. Yeah, through, through the desert, they're trippy. It's like something out of Star Wars. Yeah. Whoa. Okay. Damn. Yeah. Are Are you gonna get like a camera crew and do it semi professional or just get homies and do it, or or what? Well, he's got all this old Super 8 footage, so we're using the actual 70s footage, you know, before oh, Skateboarder yes, Magazine. That. Yeah, before Skateboarder Magazine or anybody was out there, these guys were ripping these pipes. Oh, yeah. how sick. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, we got, um. there's a couple other shots, just uh, there's me and Don in there, too. We're uh, Don skating the Florence pipe, which was the best pipe ever. That was in Thrasher about 1984. To me, that was one of the best pipes that was ever built yeah, yeah um yeah. it's right by the the penitentiary there so it's kind of sketchy <laughs> you know <laughs> federal land right oh man uh, but uh the thing was was it it's, it's this big like ditch right and wherever the ditch had to go underneath a freeway or a river they had to make it go a pipe go underneath a siphon yeah they call it a siphon so right. you know the ditch is like this big big ass ditch but then it goes into a square so that so the, the the angles go to square and then the square starts to have the littlest transitions on all four sides you know the, the bottom and the top right and the, the, those transitions get bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger until it's like 20 foot pipes and then those 20 foot pipes brand new smooth they went downhill yeah to go underneath the uh the riverbed and you could just get cooking man oh, yeah. Yeah. yeah third yeah. third kick turn 10 o'clock easy yeah i mean if you if, if you could go back and forth you know what i mean you and, basically and just, had as much speed as you needed like yeah. as, as, you as wanted, high as you yeah. could go is how high yeah. you could go yeah yeah yeah, Whoa. yeah. that's and then kind of like baldy out. like having that little slope to get your speed oh yeah yeah you were just like freaking but shoot. and it's hard to explain but unlike baldy where you can do a click out those diamond transitions were smooth so you could come out of the pipe over vert and then hit flat wall and end up in kind of the shallow end of the pipe because the transitions went down to nothing it was it kind of like a was it like a little hip no it's like a diamond so you're going from round to square and the tranny goes oh pitches, okay got it. all four all four quadrants and so it would go Damn. down to nothing. Yeah, it, it, there was like yeah. a shallow end. It was gnarly. So say if it's a 20-foot pipe, that's about a 10-foot transition, right? So you could come down at 10 feet, 9 feet, 8 feet, 7 feet, 6 feet, 5 feet, 4 feet, to nothing if you wanted to. But yeah. why would you want to do that? Or hang it way out on the flat wall <laughs> yeah. and then do the, you know, like a shallow end of a pool. And yeah. Hope okay. you keep all your teeth. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and they were actually 22-foot uh, pipes. Perfect. Oh, 22. There you go. But uh, yeah, we brought uh, we brought a lot of people out there. Uh, Salba, Malba, Tony Alba, Mondo, Roscop, Keith Meek. Everybody came out. I mean, it, that was we we Arizona had the pipes and, the and it had the pools and the pool. So you know, back <laughs> back in the day when all the parks were closed down, I mean, that was the place to come. You know, now now there's great parks everywhere. But I mean. We had we had the lockdown. Oh, and the ditches too. Yeah, I ditches. forgot to mention the ditches. So, 
What was the strategy with the pools? Because I know I've been out there in certain times where it's like, A, it's a million degrees, and B, the glare and the reflection. Like, are you guys just three shades of sherbet sessions, like right at the perfect, or like is is there people with lights, like, or are you in the middle of the day just toughing it out, or what, what's what's the deal? All of the above. All of the above. <laughs> okay. yeah. Whatever it took, man. <laughs> yeah, like at Dead Cat, we put plywood across the shallow end so you could just kind of sit in the shade in between taking runs. A lot of places <laughs> we skated at night. Um, just anything. Yeah, there's dead, a, there's not a lot of shade anywhere. No, no. <laughs> no. You, you get used to it. I mean, you retreat to the AC, but uh, Dead Cat started getting where the neighbors, I mean, that pool was there for like 10, 12, 15 years. Hugest pool, big old huh. Roman in. Uh, but it got so the neighbors were calling the cops as soon as they, they saw you come in, right? So we ended up having to get up at like, oh, dark 30 before the neighbors sneak in, wait for the sun to come up, and then still have a guy posted out on the corner with a walkie-talkie yeah. because we didn't have cell phones to tell us when the cop was coming around the corner yeah. so we could get out. Total strike yeah. mission, like SEAL yeah. Team 6. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I love like the shit you were talking about last time we talked about the underground pipes and stuff just sounds so sick. Yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah. Man, that was a good vibe. Uh, and then – Somebody was asking me today when I was telling them I was uh, talking to you guys. I don't remember if we discussed, but what happened with Bam Bam? He still lives in Phoenix. Um, so so Brian had a journalism degree, went to work for Thrasher. I got an engineering degree, moved back to Southern California. Our bass player, Chicken Butt, had a business degree, went to work for a bank. Um, Bam's the only one that really tried to just do music and music only. And he just, uh, when the band kind of moved to California, he didn't want any part of it. And he would play with all these local bands. And 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 these, these people kind of took advantage of him a little bit because he's such a talented kid. And these guys would sit there and go, hey, we're going to get signed to a record label. And he kind of believed them. So mm -hmm. he turned down a lot of stuff with us because, you know, he was going to get signed. And and it never happened. And it's it's kind of sad because he's he's was or is a truly gifted drummer. Right. Okay. Yeah, he was he was such a good I mean, he was made, in my opinion, to play fast punk rock. Like that was what he was good at, you know, and all these other bands that were telling him he was getting signed, it wasn't even showing how good he was. Right. You know what I mean? Like he was playing they, half speed. Yeah, they just want a rock beat where you know, you see that guy in his prime you know, and I'm hitting it hard and man, that he friggin' fantastic drummer. Plus the other thing is a lot of drummers are just you know unta 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 crash and they play the left side of their set uh -huh. and just did the whole he was like keith moon jr man he yeah. just was like animal you know it's not a good show yeah oh just nuts and really really creative beats okay uh don is it true that you were working with two of the guys from the meat puppets at one point yeah, I used to work at a restaurant parking cars, and me and the bass player would park cars, and then the guitarist was actually a busboy, if you can imagine that. <laughs> while they were in, while the Meat Puppets was a band, or this before the it's, band? It's right when they started the Meat Puppets. So I remember going from work to watch one of their first shows at a house party. Damn. Those guys are good uh, musicians, right? Oh, they're great musicians. Amazing. Um, super <laughs> And they're and they're it's like the Jimi Hendrix experience when they play with Derek, they're telepathically tight so they can kick these jams off. And there's only three of them and they kind of know where it's all going because they're all kind of tripping the same way. Right. Mm. Where it's not just, OK, the song has three parts, two guitar solos, and then it ends. They just kind of weave it together. And, yeah, super talented musicians. Mm. Yeah, some, okay. some of their earliest stuff, man, is so crazy, like. Their first, their first single, uh, in a car. Yeah, it's gnarly. It's gnarly, <laughs> dude. It's like their stuff is all over. But there's some stuff even before that that's just like, wow. There's, there's no, you, you can't even explain it, man. But it's so good. Huh. Yeah, those guys really. I love seeing them, man. They're well. And just yeah. to give you a feel, not to interrupt, but uh, you know, they ended up on MTV Unplugged because Kurt Cobain could not figure out for the life of them how to play those songs. Yeah. <laughs> They're not easy songs to play. Yeah, right. 
they played they covered nirvana covered like two of their songs right or yeah but they two. actually brought the meat puppets out to play them because you know <laughs> lake of fire or whatever that's not an easy song to play it's trippy okay damn yeah looking over the whole history what kind of things stick out to you i mean i know there's a million but is there a few highlights that are dear to your heart like first time you played east coast or like left the country or i don't know played with some band that was rad and i know that that you got a million of these things but is there a couple that are dear to your heart a little more than I got one, but you go first i don't know the one uh I remember playing with the big boys. Uh, oh, yeah. They were a friggin' great band. We loved them. And uh, they took us to the Pflugerville Ditch. which uh, was Texas? Which, yeah, yeah, which was pretty much the Texas Ditch and just, you know, showed us around, took good care of us. Uh, took us to Bastrop, this cool bank. Yeah, pool. Bastrop was at this old army uh, base, this huge, huge-ass pool, but it was banked. I've been there. Yeah, I've been yeah, to that one. Yeah, yeah. so... Um, and then they had this like gigantic barbecue for us too, you know, which was <laughs> like just the friggin' homecoming, you know, and, uh, Hospitality. and, and it, it was super good. And then, uh, uh, we played with them at this huge theater with a, with a big old stage, like a stage big enough for like, uh, it was a movie theater. Yeah. It was a movie theater, but, but the stage was big enough. You could do a play on. So, so lots like a big ass stage and big ass, probably 500 seats, 800 seats, like huge. So we played before them and then they come on and I mean, just great vibes. And all of a sudden they go, all right, we're going to do fun, fun, fun. We want everyone to come up on stage. And me and Bam are sitting back there and at, you know, about <laughs> second to last row or whatever. And we're, we're all now we're going to sit up. Everybody else, but us went up on stage, like the entire play. There were probably like 400 people on stage with them playing while they did this song everybody's singing and screaming you know just yelling along and nothing got smashed you know nothing like that but it was just a friggin cool cool vibe and you know and then there were so you know so many just skate places we ditches and pools and midnight downhill runs that we did while we were on tour you know it, it was it was great well and at the big boys show um they were actually big fans of ours and their their horn section came up they're like looking down kicking the dirt and stuff and they're like uh well you guys do lowrider right i'm like yeah and he's like well can we play with you and i'm like sure so somewhere out there there's a tape of us playing lowrider with the big boys horn section because they learned it and then played it with us on that same stage it was super cool this is in the 80s yeah, yeah. 80 wow. 83 or 84 that's so sick yeah. um so my memory real quick and i told the story a couple times is one of the most amazing bands i've ever seen and one of the most amazing shows i've ever seen was we opened for the bad brains for their first la show oh, and damn. it was you the ukrainian culture center and this will be important later but it had a curtain so we play they put the curtain up bad religion play they put the curtain up the lewd plays or whoever they put the curtain up and all that was out at that time, no one had ever even heard of the bad braids. The only thing that was out was let them eat jelly beans, which has pay to come on it. it right. Compilation which, compilation, no pictures, nothing. So the curtain goes out. The whole audience is like, Whoa, I didn't know they were black. And they launched into Ceylon and just the whole play. I've never seen, I was on the stage looking at the crowd. I never seen 3000 people erupt like that because yeah. Those guys played so tight, so fast. They were so good. Second song, HR flings himself like 15 rows into the audience. They were just gnarly. They, I want to say they played like 30 songs in 20 minutes. They were that gnarly. <laughs> One of the best shows I've ever seen. I just got yeah. goosebumps telling the story. They were so, yeah, I know. It's crazy. I wish that they could have kept it a little longer. They, they, did, they gave us like a little taste and then went yeah. into the reggae vibe or whatever the little thing but man bad brains is one of the most listened to bands on road trips for us like for sure it's like acdc bad brains and probably a few others but those are definitely up there super super talented dudes like they're the guitarist the bassist the drummer they're just ridiculous good 
Mm. And they they play just completely high. (laughs) So go figure. (laughs) Uh, Rewinding a little, you guys mentioned the big boys. Um, I've met Tim and uh, he's super nice and friendly and great, but I never got to uh, meet Biscuit. Um, Is there something you could say about Biscuit a little bit? So Biscuit was a big guy. He was a big boy. They're all big boys. Tim is like kind of the shorter one, but Uh he's still, you know, uh, but Biscuit was just a big, huge van, and he was gay. He was openly gay, and he wore whatever the hell he wanted to. Pink cowboy boots, the whole bit. Yeah. <laughs> just the nicest dude. Yeah, super nice guy, like great singer. And I, I remember he wore kind of like a moo-moo <laughs> at, at a gig one time, and he got all these baby heads, and he just uh, safety pinned them to his moo-moo. <laughs> so he was like a, a baby head moo-moo, man. And it was just, and you know, the thing about those guys is they didn't sound like anybody else. You right. know, every every song was different and and great. You know, kind of like the Bad Brains. You know, and and uh, that that's what I liked about punk back then is there wasn't really a formula. It was just do whatever you want to do, man, and and just kill it. And that that they definitely did that. But I mean, and uh, Biscuit was a great artist too. He would just make. St- art out of found stuff before mm. it was cool, you know, just little toys. I, I got a little thing with just some some little plastic things and like voodoo stuff on it, you know, uh, but just super nice guy. And they all skated too, you know? Right. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and imagine the crap they probably got. I mean, Texas, Texas 1981. Yeah. I mean, Jesus, first you're, <laughs> you're gay, then you skateboard, then you're a punk rock. It's like strike three. Yeah. You know, because it's they'll they'll drag you behind a truck in Texas. <laughs> it's pretty yeah. oh man. Okay, so what was the first full album? Was that the red and the black one? Yeah. Okay. From my perspective as a kid, when I started getting into um punk and, and vinyl, the combination for us, the cover was kind of a big deal. And like the aggression, I, I told Brian before, it was like aggression's cover. I didn't know who they were, but fuck, they're skating on there. I'm grabbing yeah. it, right? That's Arthur and, Lake. Yeah. Yeah. And you guys have this one. I don't know if it's a single or an album, but somebody's jumping the pit at Baldy. It's like that's shot Julian from behind. Stranger. Yeah, Julian Stranger. Yeah, Julian, yeah. yeah, I shot that photo, man. I took him, <laughs> I took him there and... uh He's going the hard way where if you miss, you go <laughs> under. So, yeah. yeah. Well, we both we both had to go the hard way. Yeah, because the, the wood yeah. wasn't there. I had to carry my camera with me, too, so that would have could have been double bad. But, yeah. Yeah, that's huh. Julian, man. I used to skate the Safeway Curbs with him uh, when I when I In worked SF. at Thrasher. Yeah. For sure. Was okay. that a single or an album? That's an album. Yeah. That was, o- only Live Once. Okay. Yeah. Rad. That's a pretty good album from the 90s. I mean, things were weird in the 90s. And like, that's when I went to work at Thrasher, which, uh, you know, for me, when when KT called me up to go work at Thrasher, it was a hard choice because because we, we had the I had the pools on lockdown in Phoenix. Like there wasn't a pool that that, you know, went dry. I didn't know about it. You uh-huh. know what I mean? And I had I had my crew of just some freaking hard chargers, but they were all kind of on the they, they skated on the edge and they lived on the edge so i was a little bit afraid of like leaving them and like not what are these guys gonna do you know what i mean yeah but i mean we had every single pool going it was great i mean but you know i, I said hey you know what yeah it's a once a lifetime i'll go you know check it out and the thing was was 90s was the time when pool skating was no longer cool and punk rock was no longer cool yeah so all of a sudden there i am and i got like you know you know, learn to street skate and uh, learn, learn to like hip hop, which, you know, I did, but it just wasn't my thing, you know? So it was kind of a little uphill battle. And for JFA, it was kind of the same thing too. Like, you know, the eighties was kind of our heyday and we were just frigging playing everywhere and doing everything. And now it's like, well, punk rock's not cool anymore. Big wheels, not cool, dude. You know, jeans. No, you got to wear baggy pants, you know? Like, well, no, we're going to do what, what we want to do. And so all through the 90s, yeah, <laughs> we, we still played. I ride my skateboard. I don't carry it. Yeah. 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 <laughs> I mean, we, we played backyard parties. We played the nude bowl. We played little, you know, shithole clubs. Um, but people really didn't know know about us because we weren't. The magazine didn't care. No, you know, it wasn't cool anymore. 
Mm. But I mean, we never broke up since 1981. We, we've been playing and skating, you know, every single day since then. So that, that, that album only lived once is, you know, it's got some really good stuff on it, but a lot of people don't know about it. No, so it's a little under it. radar because it was the 90s. Yeah. 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 All the photos on it are from Baldy. Yeah. Like okay. in and around Sick. Baldy. Yeah. If you yeah. open it up, there's a buddy of ours at about 10 o'clock at Baldy on the inside jewel thing. When you open the jewel I, thing. Yeah. yeah. I think he's higher than Tip Clock. That's Steve Schneer. No, AKA, Steve Shelton. Or Steve Shelton. Steve Shelton. Steve Shelton. AKA Biff Burley, yeah. man. Just yeah, the big, right. he was on the cover of Thrasher. Uh, he had a frontside grind, a black and white picture on a black cover with a red logo. But ah. he was just Mr. Gnarl Dog, dude. You take him to that pool and it's just like friggin' copings flying everywhere and stuff, man. We right. actually had a pretty good JFA team for a while back in the 80s when we had our boards out. We had all the best, you know, Phoenix pool skaters on it. And uh, that's a pretty good, uh, pretty good crew. We had Todd Joseph. Uh, he was a Sims Sims writer. He actually did the best layback airs in the business ever. Yeah, he they called it the Todd Twist because he would kind of oh, go yeah. up, yeah, and go like like this, and then he he would come in like invert from it. I can't even explain it. Yeah, but. it was a layback air to a front side invert. No, back to, like back to a back side. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He it was he just took them to yeah, the it was trippy. Whole new level. Yeah, it was Gumby. So I was born and raised in Northern California. I've been here my whole life. And what I was taught at an early age in skateboarding was the layback air is whack. But yeah. if you do it like Todd did, it's yeah. fucking epic. That's yeah. what I always heard. Like layback air. So it's like kind of like a stink bug, like well, yeah. gr gross. But if Todd, if you see Todd do it, it's yeah. like the yeah, right it looks way. cool. Yeah. yeah right. I mean, I don't buy that whack shit. I mean, whatever. So, <laughs> but most people like, can't do it. I mean, right. yeah, you could say that about a frontside air. It's whack, right? If you, if everybody grabs stink bug, yeah, you know, uh -huh. you know what I mean? People talk shit about the Benihana. I think a fucking Benihana done right looks pretty badass, man. <laughs> yeah, Grabbing tell that to the soy. You know? <laughs> yeah, you know, that, that, yeah, I, I don't like let anybody tell me what's cool or what's whack, you know, <laughs> they, you, if you don't like it, whatever. So at this stage in our life, yeah, we're not, we're not and, yeah, at all cares. stages, yeah. all stages. When I was young, I was very impressionable. I had like feds yeah. telling me <laughs> the right inverts. You you're know? right. All right. Yeah, you're right. You're right. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I love the song preppy. Uh, a lot of your songs, when I first listen to them, I'm thinking you're kind of talking shit, but then as I get to know you guys more, it feels more like sarcasm. Oh, it's total sarcasm. But it's a it's a little bit of both, probably. Yeah, we we talked a lot of shit. I mean, I talked a lot of shit. Um, and you know, I, as you get older, it's like, yeah, you know, not everyone's an idiot. Everyone got something cool about them. But I mean, at that time, everybody wanted to kill you if you were a punk rocker and <laughs> or a skateboarder. Yeah. So it was it's, like it's kind of like you know what? Well, well, fuck you then. You know, like fuck you, fuck you, fuck you. You're cool. And fuck all the rest of you guys. So that, right. that's kind of where we were coming from. And back then, when you were in Arizona, you obviously weren't surfing, right? No. no just skateboarding. But that's so where we, surf, we... Surf punks were not skateboarders we do, but now surf surfing every morning we do. Well, like no, that. the surf punks <laughs> line was from a band I was in before. And one of the reasons I quit was they never would play my stuff. And the drummer would sit there and go, that's surf punk music. Well, the surf punks were a new wave band. I oh, the really band. Play. Okay. Yeah. And so I'm like, that just ended up the line. Surf punks were not skateboard. We do. Ah. Cause I finally started a band of my own where I could play my fast stuff. This is right. my beach, baby. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but also, I mean, li living in Arizona, the closest you could do was like surf skate. Right, or the no, wave, so, right? The uh, well, the, the yeah, wave maker. No, that didn't count. That didn't really count. <laughs> I went <laughs> once. Yeah, but I mean, Those things will fuck you up. Yeah, I went there one time and they pulled the plug, and everybody's like circling around the drain, like hundreds and hundreds of people. Man, Dude, was, <laughs> we did it. We went to Cayman Island and they had one, and we were all drinking, and it was just a a washing machine. You're just like go 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 like. Oh man, we were yeah. so sore the next day. Well, the one in Arizona was like a giant toilet. It had a big cinder block wall with water columns in it, and they would flush it, and the water would go down and hit this ramp and make a like a whitewash wave. 
I wrote it one time. It was pretty funny. Yeah. And funniest thing was there were local guys there. And I'm like, you guys are such gooks. gooks. Yeah. <laughs> What's uh, the situation nowadays? Like, are you guys getting out there at like Dawn Patrol? Like, is there, a, is it a big, it, SoCal is surfing everywhere, right? Yeah. So well, is I surf it almost, almost every day. Um, I'm retired, so I just surf. Okay. So are you getting kind of like, do you care about times when there's less people and stuff? Or are you just going when the waves are good? Oh, yeah. Well, and I try and avoid people. It's, it's, it's no fun when it's crowded. It seems, it's too, yeah, sketchy. Too, too many dogs at the dog bowl, you know? It's not fun anymore. Uh-huh. You ever but see... I, I got some spots where there's, you know, less people, and I get around. You ever see Salba out there? I heard he's been paddling out. Yeah, I, Salba, Salba and I go out a lot, man. He he, he goes out there, and, uh, you know, he brings his wife, and uh, we just have a fun time, man. He's he fucking shreds, you know? Um I serve gentlemen's hours, you know. I don't. I'm not. I'm not a but the crack a butt crack. You know what uh -huh. I mean? That's not, I, I got too much important sleep to take care of. You know what I mean? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> well, I, you don't. Gentlemen's hour is a good quote because you don't fuck with people that paddle out at ten or eleven because they're hung over. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. So these guys that I've been filming some of my friends, um, and they're out there. As the sun's coming up, they're like, oh, yeah. it's so crazy. I'm no, like, that's too and San much. Francisco's freezing. Like the yeah, water up yeah. here, the weather, the waves are not. It's just like all crazy. I'm like, you yeah. guys are insane. <laughs> so actually on our new record, we got a song called Fort Point because me and Brian surfed under the Golden Gate Bridge one day. That's the yeah. dream. Yeah. Wow. So like Fort Point, if the, the, the spot, right? Yeah. Like you, if you look at it from... It, the the inside wave is kind of parallel to the, to the Golden Gate Bridge, right? So so you're looking at most. That's where it mostly breaks is just you know you're looking out and on your left is the fort and you can kind of see the bridge behind it. Mm. When it's when it's bigger, it goes a little bit and you go around the corner. Um, you're you're like kind of right near the bridge and it comes around the corner. To some, me and Don skated surfed it. We were out to sea past the bridge yeah. we oh, were looking at buoy? The other... no not that far no but past the bridge yeah. we were looking so at we the, were looking the, up at the bridge yeah the ocean side of the bridge yeah oh. catching waves and like it's a it's a left but it, it turns, turns right turns. so to make the turn you got to kind of like tic tac and you're, you're going left but you got to keep cut back right to to make the turn yeah. it's like a snake run you got to make the big right turn <laughs> Yeah, dude, we were just there, like uh, when the big waves hit here. It was probably like oh, a month yeah. ago now, and we went out to look at it. And I was like, dude, it could seriously be like a hip where you come in here and then you transfer into this one. Yeah, it's yeah. like a ninety degree kind of deal. Yeah, and yeah. right where the ninety is, there's a big rock yeah. that has its own name. It's called Rhino. <laughs> so you got oh. you got a roller coaster that rock. <laughs> Yeah, I got my I got my leash wrapped around that rock a couple times and uh not good. Yeah. I did I did that in Seal Beach one time. So Seal Beach gets big too sometimes and I, I, I worked at the newspaper there and one day it was big and I got the surf fever boss, I got the surf fever, gotta go out. Okay, get out of here, you're no good right now. So I, I go out there and there's all these boogie boarders because it's really shadow, shallow right there, right? Mm -hmm. So I'm all well fuck it, fuck these guys. I'm gonna go over here a little closer to the pier. And wave comes. I'm just about to get it. 30 boogie boards. Right? Fuck you guys. I go a little closer to the pier. Same thing. Go a little closer. Finally, a wave comes. You hear the the guy on the pier goes, yeah. Drop in. Do a turn. Beautiful. Come back in while I should pull out. Nah, I'm going to do one more turn. All of a sudden, I come down, and there's the pilings of the pier. And I'm like, fuck. Shoot my board. It wraps around the piling of the pier. The wave comes up. It's really high. And and as it goes out, the water goes down. But my board stays at the high point wrapped <laughs> because it's wrapped around so many times. I'm getting like pulled back with just like my leash. You, go, ah, you know what I mean? And I'm like trying to get my leash up. Ah, ah, and I look back. Here comes another fucking wave. Like right into the piling. 
and I'm like, just relax. And I'm like, and I'm feeling barnacles like crash up against my face. I'm just, oh man, relax. Dude, that, that, that happened two or three times before I finally got the leash <laughs> off. I get out of the water and a white lifeguard rolls up in his Jeep. He goes, are you okay? I'm all, fuck you. And I, I <laughs> turned to the guy, to the guy, some dude, I'm all, dude, you see my board? He's all, oh yeah, man. It went way to, on the other side of the pier. What's left of it? <laughs> so, so then I come in, my boards crash, whatever. Three weeks later, I talked to my shaper, Matt Bettis, and he's all, hey, Brian, I heard you were hanging around down at the pier a couple weeks ago. <laughs> Cause I, <laughs> I'm like this, and dudes are like up on the pier, like looking down, <laughs> pointing at him, watching me going to the pile pilings, man. So, yeah, <laughs> fuck. But I one last that. thing about Fort Point, and it kind of plays into the song. Uh, what you, what you want to do normally in a surf spot, you want to swing wide and not have to duck dive the waves. Well, at Fort Point, you want actually want to hug the point and do that because when me and Brian were out there, this guy brought his girlfriend, and she decides, "Oh, screw this! I'm not going to duck dive the wave. I'm going to go wide." Well, she gets sucked into the shipping lane, and there's this big evergreen freighter going by. <laughs> And he had to like paddle out and get her and then paddle her into the beach, like outside the bridge. It was gnarly. Yeah. Cause the current just grabs you and all of a sudden oh, yeah. she's the shipping lane. Yeah. She was paddling in and going out. Yeah. You know, there, you, you can't, you can't fight her. Man. The undertow will shoot you. If you get to yeah, one yeah, point, dude. they say but, you'll just be uh, out past. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so anyway, the break in Fort Point is the, the ship going by and whatever music they're playing on the ship when it goes by. <laughs> so 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 going back to videos, we're doing a whole bunch of different videos for this album. They're going to come out whenever. Mm. Uh, for Fort Point, I'm working with Pete Hoff, uh, who does Avenue Films. He films a lot of stuff. In, yeah, I know, in, Pete. Yeah. And uh, Pierre, Chef Pierre. Yeah. big. He's a big... Uh, jfa fan we're big pierre fans he's okay. gonna be in the video too and uh pete's gonna get a bunch of uh four point footage for us so Rad. so look, look for that we're gonna try and do a friggin uh video for every song we got a song called stage dive and uh ed culver who took all the rad photos of all the bands back in the 80s uh, -huh. uh covers for tsol wasted youth right. social distortion Vandals. adolescence vandals everybody He's got the shots and he, and he's all, I, I'm all, Hey Ed, can we get a couple of uh, photos, you know, stage dives to go with the song? He sent me so far, like 20 something photos. It's going to just be all the rad Ed Culver photos wow. to this, you know, like the real ones, the backflips, the swan dives, the yeah, the, the, like the cannonball. The, yeah. The, and, and the real pit, like yeah. a real pit back then. Like man. you kids today, man, you don't know you don't know what a real pit is, man. I'll tell you. Seriously. I've been busy. That's my caveat here, but I am working on trying to get the speed wobbles one going for you. Yeah, yeah cool. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah and well, we're gonna have uh Schmitty do a, a video for the speed wobble blues for us too. So kids, look for that one. That's gonna be a good one. You better do it now. And <laughs> before all that uh i have this um it's kind of like a feel good tribute to jake where peter hewitt and uh bailey i don't know if you guys know bailey he's down in your zone steve bailey but yep, they all yep, went to yeah. japan uh uh i think it was 2001 to this epic skate park called mikasa and it's uh a photo of bailey on the cover all in over a ladder and it's pretty iconic like one of when people look at all the thrasher covers they talk about that one anyway i interviewed and this this so this is a crazy long story and i'll try to make it short but i saw you guys play at nude bull and peter hewitt impressed me like only peter hewitt can like i yeah. hadn't seen him in person and i was like that's the guy right there like you yep. just know yep. so and today is peter hewitt's birthday so the the like it's happy birthday you know, peter everything comes in threes but so i went and interviewed pete and bailey and we're doing this thing and we're using one of those instrumental songs for like the background piece of them skating 
it's like surf tunes because they're not doing a lot of tricks because it's a gnarly thing. So it's just kind of like you'll really dig it. I'll send over a little preview for you. Um, yeah, I think almost... that's four points. So we'll have two videos for four point. Oh, okay. I think that's the one you're going to use. Yeah, right on. It's like a surf. Yeah, and he's like, yeah, yeah. yeah and it goes yeah. so good. So I'm hyped on that. Um, yeah, let's talk about the new album. Uh, how did the whole thing come about? Did you guys like intentionally plan it out or did songs start filtering in and you said, let's fucking do an album or? I know Don's going to want to talk, but I'm going to, I'm going to cut him off real quick. So <laughs> let, think about it this way. All every band that I like, I pretty much only like their first album. Right. Uh -huh. And, and Don will give you the quote, but basically you have your whole life to write your first album. And then all of a sudden you're signed or whatever and the record company. All right, what's your second album? So mm -hmm. there's very few bands that I like past their first album. Some second, you know, there's there's a few, you know, I mean, TSOL, The Damned, The Clash, right up to before Sandinista. That's just my personal stuff. You know what I mean? But pretty much everybody else, it's mostly first albums. With us, this album took all, took probably as long as it takes most bands to write their first album <laughs> just because we haven't put anything out since like 10, 12 years, 10 so, years, 10, 10 years. years. Yeah. So it's got some good stuff on it. It's well, I'm pretty friggin' stoked with it, man. So is 10 years since the last one. Yeah. Speed, yeah. Of, speed of sound, I think was 2010 or thereabouts. See longevity. Yeah. You can almost do another first album. If it's that's 10 yeah, years. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. That's kind of where he was going with that. Okay. Yeah. It's well, like, yeah. Nudes just called and he said, what about volume four, Black Sabbath? Killer! Well, yeah, I mean, I mean, there's, a, you know, there's a good, there's exceptions to the rule, but you, you hear what I'm saying. No, well, I get, a lot of people, I've heard that a lot of and times. And the damned all the way through strawberries, at least. I mean, geez, they did a lot of good stuff. Yeah. 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 Which the damn second album, Music for Pleasure, very underrated. Kids, check it out. All right. So mm -hmm. how did you guys, what was the process though? Like were, were there songs filtering and more recently, did you tighten them up or like how'd it go? Well, there was maybe three or four songs that kind of made it into the set, but we were playing so much. It was hard to, uh, to stop, hard, hard to, hard to stop and hard to get. And we were also struggling with a drummer. We've always had drummer problems. Mm. And so, um, I swear we taught our old drummer these songs like 50 times. It was like 50 first dates, right? He'd come <laughs> to practice and I go, dude, you had it last time. You killed it. What do you mean you don't remember it? <laughs> so it took a long time. And a lot of the songs are about five years old. But when COVID hit, it's like, screw it. We're not playing. Let's tighten these things up. So I would sit in my, my bass player's living room with his dog watching us and figure out bass lines that fit these songs. And we changed the arrangements and we brought Brian in. So with COVID, we actually had time to sit down and really, really put the songs together the way they should be versus like Brian said, like, bang, I need something in six months. Here's 20 songs. Right. And I got to throw in uh, uh kudos to our new drummer, Jamie Reedling. Shout out. Friggin' out. He can do, uh mitch mitchell high praise that's important too because when i write a song i have to be able to look at the drummer and go no dude this is hunt sales or this one's mitch, mitch mitchell or i want crash ride like rat scabies right. or the desert pipes one i really wanted it to sound like martin atkins from public image right so huh. for me to be able to tell him that and then he goes oh okay i got that and just, you know, or I'll do it like this or I'll do it like this. He's super versatile. Yeah. So for me as the songwriter to go, oh, my God, that's it. It, yeah, it was right. nice. And we do a cover of uh, a Who song and he, uh, my wife, and he freaking kills the key. Oh, Keith he kills Moon that. Too. Yeah. Yeah. Not a oh. lot of people can play Keith. And he no. skates. And he skates. Which is important. And he surfs. And he also played on uh, on uh, Skateboard Anarchy. Which has it wasn't really out that much on uh, you know CDs, but it's out there, and people people love that one. So yeah, mm. super super good. We're stoked. We got it. You know, tight rhythm section is is kind of the, the basis of it. Well, and, and yeah. going back to Bam Bam, I just couldn't do that. Uta, Uta, Uta Crash guy, you know, it's got to be the whole freaking thing in a right. bass line that I never would have came up with on my own. So that's what we got. 
Okay, cool. And what's the you get what's the name of the album? Uh Last Ride. Last Ride. Okay. Yeah. And and so the last song is Last Ride or Yeah, no. the last song is Last Ride and if you're a Mitch Mitchell fan, uh Jamie goes full Mitch Mitchell on this song. Ah. And yeah. then Brian was telling me you got a lot of inspiration in writing the uh lyrics to I forget what song, maybe it was Speed Wobbles, but you were like, you were oh, grabbing yeah. little things from this and that and kind of yeah. like paying homage to some of your influences. Sure. Well, yeah, Speed Wobble Blues, because, and it starts out with the quote from Don, because, you know, Don used to write a lot for Thrasher too. Yeah. Uh, back in the 80s, we we both wrote for Thrasher, took photos, because we had the best pools and the best ditches anywhere. So, you know, here here you guys go. You know, very well, wow. Uh -huh. But, um, he said something somewhere about, you know, anyone who's ever who's ever skateboarded has downhilled and anyone who's ever downhilled has eaten shit. Yeah. <laughs> right. So so that's kind of the start of the song. Like anyone who's done any skateboarding has a tale to tell. You know what okay. I mean? And then uh, it's like I just when I wanted to make it the, the, the ultimate song to speed wobbles. So I, I brought out stuff like street pizza. Right. Yeah. Like, you know, road rash is one thing. But yeah. street pizza is when like your skin is like it's got pepperonis on it and some <laughs> yeah. peas and all that. Yeah, you know? <laughs> that's street pizza. I got I got a um a, a quote from uh, C. R. Skesic, one of my favorite quotes of all time uh, about skateboarding, and this is like about the Dogtown days, and it's the edge of the glide is all that's surveyed. Yeah, that's a good one. That, that skateboard, the edge of the glide, baby. That's what we're all after, right? We're not just gliding. We want to get to that edge, right? And that's all we're looking for. That's all we're surveying. There's a guy. Yeah. There's a, a guy named Bongo. There, and Skateboarder used to have a, a real cool comic uh, in it called Mellow Cat. There's mm -hmm. this old hippie who would like, he knew the Mabuhu religion where his board could fly. And he, he had a little... Freaking, uh, I think he had an alien buddy and, and he had Rat Stink and the Rat Tones, which was the punk rock band that lived in the in the Bimbaldi pipeline. But um, their their song, and we're going to do this song someday. It was it was in the, the uh, comics. It was all, do not enter. I'm going the wrong way. If you follow me, I'll lead you astray. Yeah. So I'm like, fuck yeah. And I'm like 12, you know, and I'm like, this shit is cool. But Bongo was the god of skateboarding and like falling. So if you fell, that was a bongo, like a head bongo. Like a skull bongo. Yeah. yeah, skull bongo, head bongo. Okay. So like there's something about, you know, you you're 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 freaking coming down down the hill and it's glassy, but bongo's right there, baby. You know, and then uh one time I was downhilling with some buddies at a fiat. I had six guys in my my fiat. We went to go down, bomb this hill. And it was uh, rocks and cactus on the side. And I got the speed wobbles and friggin' rough ass asphalt. The whole side of my uh, body was just raw friggin' meat. My, the, the right side, which which was kind of a problem because I had to drive the stick shift back with two guys sitting right there, like going oogie googie. You know what I mean? While I'm driving, which sucked. <laughs> and then when I fin finally got home, took a bath and everything was cool, I'm relaxing, go to sleep. The next day I woke up and my scab was stuck to the sheets. Oh. <laughs> so I had to, I had that, to peel. That's a good downhill I had story. to peel. So you, 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 you wake up from a sleep that's sweet and deep and your scab's stuck to the sheets. Yeah. Oh. So all true. But I'm I'm paying homage to, and there's more in there too. But yeah. But but it kind of goes with the album too, because we've done pipes. Obviously, we've done pools. The cover of this album is Signal Hill. We're in the '70s. Guys went 60 miles an hour. Yeah. On on '70s yeah. skateboards, right? So picture that for a second. And one of my favorite Stessy quotes that just kind of sums it all up. It's like. It doesn't matter what your name is or who you ride for when you hit the ground at 50 miles an hour. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Fuck. You better have oh, a I, thick I, leather I jacket on. Credit too, because uh, oh, he, he was. Uh, yeah, Dwayne's a little crazy right now. Cool, cool down, Dwayne. But uh, <laughs> but like you can't run out anything over 35, right? Like there's a yeah. certain speed when you can't run it out. Yeah, you take a 10 foot tap, and then yeah, 25 like, like, foot step, yeah. and then you're like. Ah! Yeah, you can take long steps up to a certain point, but then yeah, too too fast to run it out. Yeah, then you're hugging cactus. Yeah. 
the downhill song at uh, Signal Hill. Signal oh, Hill. Go for Broke. Go for go broke. broke. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So there was a guy. Tell him about the Big Wheel Hippie. I'll say, so Go for Broke is kind of an homage to uh, Hudson and some of the guys who used to bomb the hill. The, the NorCal guys own that hill, even though it was here, um, especially in the stand-up division, because back in the 70s, they would build these skate cars and stuff, and Hudson would just show up and put his hands behind his back and his head down and just whoop, right? Total mm -hmm. legend. Um, so at the last Signal Hill contest, they canceled it because so many people got hurt. There's people going down, there's people going down, there's people going down, there's cops with a radar gun and stuff. And this hippie, I need to see a picture, but I think he was shirtless. He had cut off jeans, he had a rat tail comb in his back pocket, bombed the course on a big wheel. And the cops with the radar gun are looking at each other and they clocked him to a 35 on a big wheel. Wow. And the caption of Skateboarder Magazine is like, cause they had all these skate cards, it's like, well, Here's a shot of a guy on a big wheel, but you know, what does all this got to do with skateboarding anyway? Cause except for the NorCal guys, everybody was laying down. Oh uh, shit. They, they have like a, every Easter uh, Lombard street, they bomb the, the hill on big wheels, kind of big oh, wheels, nice. little modified. The big curvy wheels. One? Yeah. But then they changed it. Cause Lombard, obviously it's a tourist attraction. It's too crazy. So they took it to this other straight hill that's just in Petrero. That's just, it's actually right in front of where Swenson used to live and goes right down to Whole Foods. And it's so gnarly. They're just dressed up in costumes going down on those things. Well, uh, and I wonder if that's the hill Terry Nails practice on. Cause he was the maybe. other NorCal gnarly guy. And he was in this aluminum stroker car. It went so fast. He went through the speed traps, blew through the hay bales and ended up in traffic. Yeah. We had that <laughs> stroker car at Thrasher. It was in, in yeah. when you walk in, it was right there. Was, yeah. I was like, someone was, went in this thing. Oh, like, yeah. It that, looks like a yeah. death trap. Oh, Th that was kind of the beginning of Indy too. Cause yeah. uh, cause they were building the trucks for that. And the original the yeah. stroker truck had all this kind of weird, there was this truck called the Stroker Truck. It was like suspension. Yeah, it, it had like tracks and yeah, all kinds of shit. Yeah, and that's kind of how Indy came about. Was was from was from down from going fast, right? Yeah, yeah. And that's what it's still all about, going fast. Hudson right? was rocking the original set of Indies and OJ's when he won. That's the shit that we live for. Exposure presents Threes with. I am Aaliyah Wilson, and I'm from Australia. Three words that are used differently in Australia. At a petrol station instead of a gas station. We say torch instead of flashlight, and we say Macca's instead of McDonald's. Three favorite skaters. Lizzie Omanto, my brother Kiefer, and probably Mitchie Briscoe. Three favorite tricks. Backsmith, backside nose grind, and a lush twist. Three songs that make you dance. I listen to Kill Bill by SZA. Can you feel it from Michael Jackson? And Chung Lee. How do you come out? Stay my favorites at the moment. Exposure. We'll see you at Exposure in Encinitas on the 4th or 5th of November. Yeah. I saw that on Instagram and I was like, wow. So when you guys record the album, did you just like do it stress free or did you go in and be like, we got to crank it out in a certain amount of time or like, what was the process there? Well, because the drummer was pretty much brand new. We it's, it's a lot of songs. It's 18 songs. So we broke oh. it in two pieces. So it's like studying for an exam. It's like, okay, get these nine, we'll go record them. And then we'll do the other nine and we'll go record those. And what we tried to do was we would go in the room where we could almost see each other. Um, I think Brian was behind glass, but I was in the room with the drummer and we would just try to get it one time really clean live and then keep the drums, maybe the guitar, and then go back in and overdub stuff later, you know, to make sure we got the right guitar sound and all that. So we did it in, in two chunks and we spaced it out by, I don't know, several months because we wanted the songs to be really tight. Okay. And since you wrote the songs, are you kind of the most particular out of the, everybody as far as like, no, we got to do it one more time. You, you fucked up right there. Um, well, I only wrote maybe half or a third of them. And Brian wrote the other half. Um, oh. cause he actually plays guitar and stuff too. And some oh, of them I didn't were know. Okay. keyboards. Yeah. 
Yeah, it's funny. It, it's when you talk to a band, everybody goes, "Oh, you wrote the song. You're the guitar player." And and I'm like, "No, he wrote that." And he's and then they're like, "Well, you wrote the words." No, Brian wrote the words. And I'm like, "No, I wrote the words." Right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Keep them guessing. It, it, it's a total. Sometimes he'll have a tune like uh, "Go for Broke." That's his tune, but I just jammed out a bunch of words like almost like stream of consciousness and then he made a song out of it that's so, so it's funny rad. it's like he did the guitar part and i did the words yeah that kind of kind of backwards we got it we got another song called badlands that Whoa. um covers the gambit i live right i live a mile from uh vans huntington beach park uh, okay. so i go there all the time and uh it's I, I was talking to a dude one day and he was just like he was bombed on just how skateboarding had changed since back in the day, right? Like back in the eighties, it was, there were no parks, you know, there were no, you couldn't buy stuff at, you know, shoes at the mall or whatever, yeah. you know, it was, it was hardcore. And if you skated, you were hardcore because you're going to get your ass beat, you know, and you're going to have to jump over fences and you're going to have to really work for it. You couldn't just show up and, you know, have your dad sign a, <laughs> piece of paper and go skate it so well and your parents weren't there watching you do it either yeah yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> or like they wish you yeah. were in it to, you know so right. Yeah, right right because don has a song on there called uh soccer dad called soccer dad uh, it's about soccer dads for surfers like surfer dads who never got to be pro but damn it their kid's gonna be pro yeah and i'm gonna film that kid and i'm gonna make sure he fucking learns how to surf and he does it just like i tell him to yeah and no not like that you know, so so you know, we, we're covering the whole gamut. We got another song. Don't grow up to this. be that, kids. Do not grow yeah, up. No, yeah, no, to be yelled at. I mean, <laughs> surfing's supposed to be fun. Yeah. yeah, my parents were never at the beach. They're like, "Where were you all day?" Yeah, <sighs> it's the yeah. worst. I see but that in skateboarding the all Kelly the time. Yeah. yeah, it's. I mean, skating the same way, like. Soccer is almost like not even a sport anymore. People don't even know what it is. Like skateboarding is the new soccer. And it's like yeah, right. the dad down there with his brand new, like Tony Hawkboard from 87, like I'm skating again. And like <laughs> my kid. And you're just like, no, this is not what it's about. No, yeah, it's not yeah. what it is. Yeah. Right. And bands even, I mean, they got like the Olympic uh, bowl or whatever, you know, and all the kids are like skating dad. And Hey, I love it. I love the kids are frigging ripping and stuff but it's it's not the same to me as what i want to do so you know i'll go out and do do my own thing and just you know skate skate with the bros find a ditch mm. you know i skated a pool with lance uh mountain the other day and right. i realized like because i've been you know i realized man i'm a fucking pool skater you know because i've been skating i've been skating the the vert ramp trying to get my airs back i've been skating you know the parks and all this stuff and you know doing all right on it but you know, skating a pool, I'm just like, yeah, like first run, like, you know, and that's fine. That's the beauty about skateboarding. You can do whatever you want. You can do all the above. You can do this, this, fuck you, fuck that, you know, but um, I don't know, for me, it's pool skating and ditches. You so know, I, I got a good dad story, but taking uh, it back. It, so it. we go to good skate and I'm waiting my turn. There's tons of kids, parents, whatever. And so I finally get this run going and these Back and forth kids are like these teabag kids that run with their board and then drop it and go straight across, right? <laughs> so I finally get my run to myself and I hit a couple of walls and do a Bertelman and come back the other way. And the kid did not expect me to do that. Teabag drops in on me and I hit him and I ended up hugging him so he didn't fall. And out of the corner of my eye, I see this dad. <laughs> From the grass, and I'm like, oh fuck, you know. And I, I put the kid down, like dust him off, like a cartoon thing, pat him <laughs> on the head, and he's like, I told him, I told him, and I'm like, excuse me, and I goes, I told him not to stake people, and he starts yelling at the fucking kid. Oh, <laughs> that's <my>. parenting. <laughs> that's parenting. That's parenting, dads. I thought he was gonna beat my ass for running his uh, head over. I did see a dad fucking uh so we were back at the old combi when it was at um at, at the block at orange yeah uh, um salba and i were skating it <laughs> yep. and this one kid just keeps snaking salba i'm like oh. what the fuck, dude you only like a lot of kids don't even know who they're snaking these days like yeah oh yeah you think you're hot shit, kid whatever uh -huh. right on. all right so and like we'll let him go we'll let him go 
And finally, Sal was like, no, I'm going this time. And the kid's about to drop in, and Sal was already in. So it's his it's his ride. He's in. Well, the fucking kid drops in, bails, gets all pissy, whatever. Salva finishes his run, you know, goes around the kid, twice, does back to back, you know, <laughs> double double around yeah. the kid. And it's all, yeah. So, uh, so the dad comes out, has some words with Salva. Salva's all, hey, you know what? Fuck you. You know, whatever. Fuck off. Get the fuck out of here. You don't know what you're talking about. So then we're, we're leaving and we had to go through the pro shop. All of a sudden, this dad comes around the corner and tackles Salva in the pro shop oh. in bands. And and he's got the, you know, he's got the jump on him. So he's got him. And then all of a sudden, Salva flips him and it's just like, bah, 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 you know. And, uh, you know, so long story short, the dad's going to sue Salva because he beat his ass after he jumped in from behind. Oh, and my God. He lost. Yeah. So, I mean, just stupid shit like that. I think that guy got banned from the combi. Like he, he was, Oh, yeah. Yeah, that guy. Yeah, yeah, that guy. See, but that's will, part two to um, soccer dad is banned from the combi. Come on. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so just real quick, it triggered a memory. We used to go skate the old Upland Park, and it had a ditch into the 15-foot bowl, right? Yeah, And these kids, these Myron kids would just go next and after, after, whatever. Yeah, and they my just brother, go back and forth on the, yeah, on the ditch on part the ditch. of it when we would like, like they're like this and you just want to go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And so my brother who passed away three years ago just looks at me and he goes, fuck it. And he drops in, gets a couple of good speed cars and then does the 15 foot ball. And he comes up, grabs his board. And I'm like, just looking at him, he goes, dude, it's always my turn. I just let other people go. <laughs> it's actually my turn. But, we, you know, yeah. but I thought that was the best quote, you know, because fuck these kids. Yeah. <laughs> oh, my God. Yeah. That's yeah, they have some good. Don, the Pendletons have some good quotes. Some good Don quotes. and Mike, both, man. Don, what's your uh, guitar of choice? Are you Gibson or Fender or none of the above or all the so, above? I love Les Pauls, but they're super heavy. So what I think is most people are looking for is a guitar that sounds like a Les Paul, but isn't that heavy. So lately I've been playing a uh, um, a Mexican Esquire that Fender sent me. Brian got me a free guitar from Fender. Damn, um, must be nice. Yeah, so I dropped a <laughs> humbucker in it, and it's like sounds like a Les Paul at about half the weight. And the other reason I play it is – it was free because, I mean, you play all these bars in these shows and, and you don't, you know, I've been collecting guitars through the years because I'm an old man. You don't want to see a 78 Les Paul go walking off on you. <laughs> so you bring the Mexican Esquire to the show uh, yeah, and put a nice pickup in it, you know, and I'd be pissed if I lost that one, but not like I would be if I lost the 78 Les Paul. Right. right. Okay. So, so our bass player is a bit of a luthier himself. So he, he smoothed out the the tummy tuck on it, right? So it, oh yeah, he he like contoured it. He put a belt sander on it, and it it's more contoured like a Stratocaster. So it's it's real smooth to play. So like okay. in an original Esquire, just had a single coil in it, but this one has a humbucker. It has a humbucker, but it switches. Yeah, but just one instead of having two uh, pickups like a regular tele Telecaster, the Esquire just had one, and like a you know a Strat has three. But so when Corey made this guitar for Don, Don calls it the Don Redondo Esquire. Ah. Kind of like, you know, like, kind of like some, Bill and Ted's great adventure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so it's the Don Redondo Esquire, which is a, it's a telly Esquire. with one humbucker and that's it. Did you only have one knob on it or two? No, it's, it's two knobs, but it's a three position switch. So if you put it in the back, it's a humbucker. If you put it in the middle, it turns off. So you can do the Pete Towns and go, and then front it's single coil. So I can actually make it back into an Esquire by splitting the coils on the back pickup. So we can, so do, the surf songs. So I can do surf songs or, or funk or whatever. So okay. it does everything. And it's only got one pickup and two knobs. So are you, it, are, if you're uh, going to play a show, do you bring a backup? Is there one guitar, two guitars? How many guitars? Two guitars in case you break a string. Uh, okay. And the other one I got free from Schechter. We opened for the Dead Kennedys at the House of Blues. And um, East Bay Ray is a big hero of mine. He's such a great guitar player. And I'm looking at his guitar and I didn't recognize it. I thought maybe it was a Mose, right? Like Johnny Ramone or something. And I was just talking to him. And I'm like, 
what what guitar is that? The guy next to him, I guess, worked for Schechter, and he goes, it's a Schechter. You want one? I'm like, sure. <laughs> and they mailed me one. Nah, I don't want one. Thanks. Nah, so. I don't. <laughs> I'm good. <laughs> Fuck, are you a pedals guy? I've never guy? had that happen before. It's like, hey, do you want one? I'm like, sure. <laughs> yeah, that's amazing. Fuck. They sent uh somehow we had, I think it was Fender. Somebody sent a, a a guitar to the mag for skater of the year and it was like a chris cole because he won it so they they made it like custom for him and uh -huh. we get, gave it to him for the thing that was about as close to a free guitar or anything like that i i, I was in the building when it came so nice <laughs> but but do you bring a lot of pedals with you or are you you zero. pedals? no pedals zero. no pedals because right. he will step on them. Okay. Yeah, I'll, I'll fucking break. I break shit. That's yeah. what I do. But, my, but it's my job. Not to get too tacky, but if if you have really good pickups, you don't need pedals. Uh, the really good pickups aren't real distorted, and you can actually control by going to ten, sound punk rock. By going to eight, sound like a surf song. And the really good pickups, the harder you hit them, they they sound different. Um, they actually are very dynamic. Um, and sorry for the hippie reference, but if you watch Jimmy Page, song remains the same. The guy has no pedals. He has a Wawa pedal. He's doing it all with his pickups just by adjusting the volume and the tone knobs to get all those different sounds. Um, okay. Yeah. Don't ever apologize for Jimi Hendrix reference, okay? <laughs> or Jimmy Page. <laughs> or Jimmy Page or Jimi Hendrix, either yeah. one. Yeah. Fuck. Uh well, then you guys, when you're touring, it's pretty easy. You're not bringing a lot of shit with you. We're bringing a lot of skateboards. Back, yeah. Back More skateboards. Than tour, <laughs> yeah. When we had the big the big green school bus, is a full-size 1964 International Harvester school bus. We That was back when we would bring, like, like I, I know you kids today, I just ride one board everywhere. We had, like, a, <laughs> we had three we, each. We had, like, a street board, a bank board, a pool board and a downhill board uh, yeah. times four guys in the band. Yeah. So we needed that, that bus to, uh, to do that. Like we, and, and we would do the downhill. I remember one time, one of my memories that you, what memories you have? I remember one time we're driving through the Hills of Virginia at like three o'clock in the morning on the freeway. And I'm all, man, these are some pretty nice Hills through here. It's pretty smooth. So I, I asked our, uh, our mechanic, Wayno, who was driving a hey, Wayno would you pull over for a second and I'm going to skateboard in front of the bus downhill on the freeway, but I want you to like stay behind me so I can see what the fuck I'm doing. Cause it's, there's no moon. Everybody else in the bus is sleeping. So I'm coming down. I, I, I got cooking pretty good, you know, down the hill uh -huh. and like, you know, this is pretty fucking bitching, man. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm like coming around a curve and I'm like, yeah. And the bus is like, chugga, chugga, chugga. And all of a sudden I think to myself, uh Oh, what if, what if somebody comes behind us and that's like some asshole and he's mad because the bus isn't going 70, you know, and he cuts it in front of the bus really quick. And then and I'm right there. All of a sudden, as soon as I thought that. <laughs> Plus because it was Hills, every time Brian went down and the bus went up, the headlights would be way up here and then they would come back down. No, uh, yeah. So it was like silent running there for a few seconds. No, no, that that's a different story. I went out with this this girl one time, and she had a VW, and she, you know what do you want to do? I'm all let's go on top of this hill in, in Arizona. So we went to this the uh, Pinnacle Peak, and she followed me at midnight, right? And it's a two lane highway, barrel cactuses on both sides. So as soon as I start going, like she's lighting up the the friggin' road, and I'm like, like cactuses going by. I'm like, this is cool. Then I go over a hill and down it. And as I go down it and she's going up it, it's black. Yeah. Like all of a sudden I can't see anything, but I can hear the. Oh, which is cactus is going by. Like, Holy <laughs> fuck. Go straight. Like go straight. Go. Hopefully yeah. the road's straight. And then she, the lights come on. Right. I'm all, okay. And then you go over another bump. But yeah, there, we did some sketchy stuff, bro. Well, and, um, no one does this anymore, but our downhill boards were downhill boards. They were five foot minimum, 215s, 78, 78 millimeter kryptonics. I mean, the whole deal. Okay. We went if fast. It, yeah, we went fast. Tighten the trucks down. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Just crank down. 
Oh, you want to hear one more down to story? You, all I know is sure, but all I know is you do not want to stack into a cactus. No, right. I, I'd rather take the pizza rash than the cactus rash. Todd Joseph hugged one pretty good. Yeah, yeah. I, I actually did the cactus, but I had there's one worse than that, uh, and that, that's this. So okay. we played in Tennessee one time. I think it was Knoxville, whatever Tennessee town has the biggest hills. So we played a gig. And uh, we're coming back and and we got some chick in the bus and she's going to let us sleep at our house. All right, cool. So we we go as we're going to her house, the bus is going. And so we get to the chick's house. She's got some beers and we're all sitting around drinking beers. I'm all, hey, you know, uh. Seems like you got some nice hills around here. Uh, is there a good one you would close by? You want to take me to? And I'm like, yeah, I'll take you to. So I get my my downhill board, and it's it's a foggy night. Like you can only see about like ten feet in front of you on this hill, and the hill is so steep that you can't really see that far. And it's a two lane road, but there's cars parked. It's a it's a residential hill. And there's cars parked on both sides. So it's, you know, really about just wide enough for like, you know, maybe one car. Mm. And so I'm like, oh, cool. Thanks. Uh, I, I think I'm going to go down this hill. She's like, oh, no, you can't go down this hill. You'll die. I'm all, no, I won't die. She's like, no, no, you'll die if you go down this <laughs> Don't go down this. Oh, I'll tell you what. I'm compromised. Give me a kiss. And I won't go down there. She's like, I'll give you a fuck. Fuck you. Get the fuck out. All right, I'm going down there. No, you'll die. You go down this hill. <laughs> I'm like, well, give me a fucking kiss and I won't go down the hill. Make out and everything be cool. No, bitch, I'm not going to give you. I'm like, well, I'm going down the hill. So as soon as I fucking like lifted my foot off, like I had, I put my board down and my front foot on the board. As soon as I lifted my back foot off, you're doing 30. <laughs> yeah. And like <laughs> I put my, my, my left and my left foot is I just put it down wherever. So my stance is about this wide. Uh. Right. <laughs> you know what I mean? I'm just going, you know, because all these cards are going by right. I'm like, oh, okay, wait, fuck, I think I got it. I think I got it. And like this, this the fog is going by. And finally I'm going, and I look, and the bottom of the hill is a T intersection on a main street. So so there's in an alley. Yeah, yeah, no, there's no alley that I can see. <laughs> so there's like there's there's a there's a curve that's about this high, right? And then there's a brick wall. There's just a brick. So I'm all, I'm gonna hit the curb. Then I'm going to smash into the brick wall. Oh, fuck. What's to the left? And I look to the left. I'm all plate glass window. <laughs> Curb, plate glass window. I'm all fuck. Damn it. Right. The time's running out, man. Time to make a decision, right? For curb, break plate glass window. What do you want? I look way over to the right, <laughs> and there's like this real thin uh, alleyway yeah. with like broken glass and rocks, yeah. right? I'm all, and it's like, it's like friggin', you know, eight lanes over and the, it's like a four lane friggin' road. And I'm just like, oh. the thing is, is when you're going that fast, you have superhuman turning ability, yeah. even if your trucks are tight. Yeah. And I'm just like, oh. and I was like, going over the rocks. <laughs> right. So finally I, I'm okay. Everything's good. I walk back up the hill, <laughs> go into the chick's house and she's making out with our drummer. <laughs> <laughs> God, well, there you go. That's a good story. Yeah. I just remember the alley. Are you guys planning to tour? Are you guys going to get on the road? I mean, you got to be itching right after the COVID and stuff, get out and play in front of people. Yeah. We haven't played in like three years. Uh, but since everybody's got jobs but me, we just kind of do hit and run weekend things. Uh, uh, we're going to be NorCal in June. Okay. Where? We're going to do the Inman thing in Sac oh, Sacramento. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So we're, we're just kind of doing like birthday or something. Yeah, they're just the end men thing. They're doing. They got the um the movie, the end men movie. I don't know if you heard, but it, oh, it got yeah, like yeah, first yeah. place. Yeah, so they're Be gonna do the premiere, and then we're gonna do a, a gig with uh, TSOL, I think. No the, way. Okay, I gotta go to that. Yeah. When do you yeah, have you a date go. on that? Uh, uh, June third, something. I'll send it to you. First week of June. Okay, hell yeah, yeah. something like that. But um, yeah, we're doing like like probably about eight or nine gigs in the next like start in March for three months and 
Well, you know, if you're ever in San Francisco or an hour or two away, you got to let me know because I'll go to San Jose, I'll go to Sacramento, I'll go Oakland. Let's do it. Yeah, it's it's June 3rd. We need to we need to come up and grab Mofo and get him fucking fired up for a fucking. I don't know. Did he just he just hit a good number? I think he just hit sixty or something. But like, give him. Dude, Mofo deserves so much credit. I I know. He was kind of like the heart and soul of Thrasher, and like, like hundred percent. Like, you know, and not like, just photos. His yeah, stories yeah. were. Awesome. Oh no, his writing yeah. was incredible. And the guy, so I interview him, and the guy's so fucking modest. He's like, oh, I didn't know what I was doing. I just pointed the camera, and uh, you know, they told me to read this book, and then I I started writing. Like, I'm like, dude, come on, take a little credit here, bro. Oh yeah. yeah. Yeah, Dude, I he, love Mofo. I talk to him all the time. We we go back yeah. and forth. He did. He was a great artist too. He, the early early Thrashers had a had a comic called Wild Riders of Boards. With yeah, C- yeah, yeah. Tommy and Guerrero's I, and first model was that's yeah. Bow to No Man. That's where camera. I got Bow to No Man because like they and the picture just all these chodo punk rock dudes skating the curb in front of their local friggin' liquor store, and there's a poster that says Bow to No Man. And that was the name of my my uh, zine for a little while there, you know. Yeah. Mofo, he got it. He's like the Stesic of like, yeah. Like Stesic was the seventies. Mofo was the eighties. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, and because he is a great he, writer. He inspired me to write. Um, yeah, huge, huge fan of the guy and cool photos. Yeah, I know. I can't can't say enough good stuff about Mo. He he. I worked with him side by side in the dungeon for a, a few years, and he he would close the door, turn off all the lights, burn sage, and throw some audio book on about like basically it's Rambo, but like some modern version. And it's just like, <laughs> the knife is coming, out. and it's just like every day me and the water they're going like, what the fuck is going on? <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah, he's the best. I, I love Mo. Um, I got a personal question for you guys. I don't know if you can help me or not. My wife and I are going to fly to Vegas, drive to Grand Canyon, then head to Sedona, and then end up at Phoenix Am. Is there anything that I could do to impress her on this drive? I want to make my wife happy. Isn't there between uh, Flagstaff and Phoenix like a Frank Lloyd Wright thing? Like Arcosani or yeah, something? Yeah, Arcosani. No, no, but it's no, kind of no. late. I don't yeah, know. No, no. Depends on what she's into. She, what is she into? Well, we were looking at that place. I think it's Williams or something. That's like some big railroad, like where they all come in. It's like a. Oh, okay. So if you're going to do that, that's right out of Flagstaff, right? So yeah. if you're coming down from uh, from Vegas, you go to Williams and you can actually take a, there's a train that comes out at Williams. Mm. It goes up to the Grand Canyon. Yeah. Oh. And that's a pretty cool ride. Like an old school train. Yeah. Old like school Cowboys. Train. Yeah. Okay. We just took the train to Reno and back and I'd never done that. It was so sick going through the snow and shit. Yeah. It's like the Zephyr train that goes all the way to Chicago, but oh, we yeah, just yeah. took it to Reno. Yeah, that but, sounds well, this good. This is more like old school train, though. Yeah, yeah. But I mean, if you go to the Grand Canyon, you could stay at the lodge right there. It's pretty nice. Uh-huh. Uh huh. I think we're the- doing that, and because I'm into <laughs> shooting photos of the stars, so I think we're going to do that for one night. Well, hit up my buddy Rob Locker from AZPX Skateboards. Oh, okay. AZPX.com. They do. They they do the J. They have the JFA pages on there now. Yeah. But he's like it's the Arizona punks. Okay. And that's his skateboard company. He'll hook you up with the the pools and the ditches and like whatever cool stuff too. And he's a cool guy. Okay. He's married, so he can hook you up with like the cool places to go. Rad. I mean, it's a great time to be down there right before it gets too hot. Yeah. Yeah. You want to skate the ditches while you're in uh feet. There's some good ditches, man. Okay. Yeah, I'll look into all that stuff. Um yeah. is the album available on Spotify or like where can you get it? It will be. It will be. Yeah, it's coming wait- out in the next month or so. Yeah, we're waiting for the album for the for is the vinyl gonna be to come out. There is going to yeah, be vinyl. It, yeah, yeah. It's, it's only vinyl is the only thing that's going to be, you know, for sale. Because I mean, everything else you just get it on Spotify, but it'll be on Spotify. So but is we're that gonna- at AZB? azpx.com is that where? Yeah. Well, that that so the records on um DC Jam. DC Jam records. Okay. Uh, Same label as TSOL, the Meat Puppets, all that. Yeah. Oh, right. Yeah. So, so killer. There, we're only doing five hundred of them. So, if you're a vinyl guy, you yeah. want to get on it quick. And what's funny? Now, I'm gonna do this. This was gonna be a, a trivia question. 
<laughs> okay, so I'll put it out to your guys first. See if any, uh, but I'm gonna put it out. But anyway, the uh, the color of the album. That's the question. Where does the color of the album come from? Oh, it's a mauve. It's a mauve. Uh, it's got a little uh, uh, well, thirty percent cyan, eighty uh, percent magenta. Uh, black art. That's right. Black art, <laughs> indies, and the salva bevel. Where does that color come from, kids? So that's so that's one that we're gonna also have another one that also where does that color come from? Anyways, I'm I like trying it. not to give it away. Okay, well um, you can win a free sticker if you get it, so it's important. Is there a date release date? Because if there's only five hundred, uh, I think those are gonna get gobbled. Yeah, um what do we mean? So March, May It was allegedly May. May, maybe April. Okay. So well, but keep some your of eyes them out. Be- yeah, some of them will be available from everywhere, and then a smaller amount will be available through Zia Records in Phoenix. So the 500 is just the other color. They're split. Okay. So there's like 300 and 200. Oh, so there's 500 total. Yeah, so okay. there'll be two different colorways for it. Oh, so sick. check this out. And the and the um, label of the, of the vinyl is a JFA skateboard wheel. So we have our own wheels on Speed Lab. Cause oh. and it's it's the shape of a of a sixty six millimeter bullet, but it's the the urethane of like the fastest friggin' smooth park and pool wheel you can get. Right. Um, and and so the the actual vinyl the sticker of the vinyl is that wheel, but instead of like where it says I think Speed Lab it says all the songs that are you know on that side, and then the the vinyl is like a splatter. So it's it's a pretty it's a skate record through and through the well and even the even the sides it's not front side back side it's tuck and roll it's downhill right <laughs> it's tuck and then roll uh huh yeah, yeah. Hudson Damn. tuck Hudson tuck and then roll right yeah that's so cool I'm fucking hyped you guys thanks for taking this time and and just I feel privileged to have you guys telling me all this stuff I I eat your stories up I love it all. So really stoked. Um, if you could maybe tilt the camera up just a tad before we leave to see your uh, collection behind you. Oh yeah, so that's not my collection. That's my lovely wife's. Hold on. Oh, I mean, damn. Yeah. So are, like, are those all like vintage older ones? Yeah, that's not all of her collection, but uh, that's Charlie's uh, Angels, maybe. Oh yeah, you got some Charlie's Angels. Uh, you got some Dino Mutt. Some ET, oh, some Press Parker, and then let's go over here a little bit. Uh, you got some Battlestar Galactica, Land of the Giants, Rambo, Superman. <laughs> uh, what's yeah. this? Prop Super Show, Empire Strikes Back, Dukes of Hazard. What's the chimp good. one, Don? Uh, Lance Link, Secret Chimp. Oh, nice. Yeah. <laughs> and so, and then we'll I go. I used to love that show. Yeah, I know. They used to give the monkeys peanut butter so it looked like they were talking. <laughs> <laughs> Is that why you give me peanut butter? That's dude? right. And then <laughs> you got pigs in space, uh, speed uh, buggy, you know, all that stuff. Now, this is just a small. Uh, little sample? Little sample, yeah. Okay. Well, um. If I was going to tell you, you could play any song right now, except for count. We need something longer than four seconds. What would you like to put on to take us out of here? Well, again, I would go with last ride just because of the Mitch Mitchell reference. All right. I like it. I'm looking there's forward actually to hearing one more thing it. I'd like to say you, you were talking yeah. about the nude ball. Yeah. Um, we actually put that show together. It with was one man army. No, yeah, and yeah, it was yeah. it was those guys were killer. killer. It was yeah. Brian's wedding photo. Brian gave us all longboards, the members of his wedding party, uh. and the flyer was like the big Kahuna's of desert pools invite you to a pool Cor- party. Cordially invite you. Cordially invite you. Right. So when Thrasher covered it, they edited us out. They edited the flyer. You would never know we even played. So I sent the original flyer into Thrasher and I just wrote WTF. Fausto called me at home. And the reason I want to bring this up is Fausto does not get enough credit. And uh, he's like, Don? I'm like, yeah. And he goes, it's Fausto. I'm like, you're shit me. And I'm like, he's like, no, it's Fausto. He goes, I don't know what happened with that issue, but I'm going to get to the bottom of it. Do you need anything? 
And I'm like, no, I'm good. Maybe a pair of trucks or something. He goes, well, you guys have flown the flag for Thrasher from way back when we were just newsprint. And I just wanted to tell you, thank you. And I don't know how you guys got edited out of that story. And KT told me he went ballistic on, I'm not going to say who, but um, he corrected the situation. It was funny. Wow. Okay. Yeah. I mean, no, I'm a big Fausto fan. Yeah, I, I never had a contest in my life, and that man set me up with whatever I needed forever. Yeah. And I mean, Ed Riggins, too. Ed Riggins, too, man. Love you, Ed. Yeah, it's the the shit. I mean, I'm so <laughs> fortunate to have said that Fausto hired me. Shout out to Fausto, man. Shout out. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, looking forward to hearing all the tunes and uh, hopefully see you guys in real life. Yeah. Looking forward to it, man. Show up in Sacto or San Jose. I'm there. I'm there. Okay. All right. right, um, all right yeah. Thanks, guys. All right, see ya. All Cheers. Right, see ya. Bye. Thank you for listening to another episode of Talking Schmidt. You can subscribe to the show on iTunes, Anchor, Spotify, or anywhere you get your podcasts. When you subscribe, you'll get notifications every Tuesday of new episodes the minute they become available. Also, please leave reviews in a five-star rating. It's the best way to help the show grow. All of the episodes will always remain free, but if you would like to help support the show, you can do so at TalkingSchmidt.com, where you can pick up some merchandise like t-shirts, beanies, hats, and stickers. The website has an entire archive of all of the episodes, with extra photos and videos. Email us with any suggestions, comments, or ways that the show may have improved your life at TalkingSchmidt at gmail.com. All interviews are conducted, edited, and produced by Schmitty. The intro music is Mary's Cross by the band Nature. A very special shout out goes to the executive director, Cheryl Camisa. Shout out. Love it! This is Talking Schmidt, where the Rolodex is deep, but the conversation is deeper.